Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy, Hip Hip Hop Gamer. I'm telling my man Kudo, you already know who he is. Who's better, you or Aaron Greenberg when it comes to Connect? I think Aaron Greenberg knows and he's standing right there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I will easily stomp Aaron Greenberg in any of the Connect launch lineup games anytime, any place, any day. We'll get on Hip Hop Gamer. Me and Aaron will get it going and I will just totally stomp him. Uh oh. Yo, yo, what up? It's the one and only hip hop gamer. Haven't did one in a while because it's, it's special. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't bring out the shit without it being special. You know what I'm saying? So, first off, shout out to my boy Kudo Sonata. It's my dude from Microsoft. Much love to you. But you know how I get down. If I hear something that ain't going down, that ain't going right in the industry, I gotta challenge it. And everything I do is facts. Period. So, let's get it started. Now, shout out to GameSpot.com. They did an interview with my man Kudo, and here's some of the things that he said, and here's the facts that I want to put to it to make sure that y'all understand the truth of how we get down. So, let's, let's get it started. Okay, Kudo Sonata says, we've really got a lot more going on than our competitors, okay? For a long time, we've had PC gamers and console gamers who weren't really able to play together, okay? Sonata told Game Industry International, he mentioned that to them. That's why crossplay is such, you know, it's still such a powerful idea. You should be able to play what you love and play together, right? Okay. Regardless of what device you're on, um, you're playing on, it's all about connecting people. I agree wholeheartedly with everything that was just said. Then it says, it's a really unique value that only we can offer, meaning Microsoft. See, that, that's the problem right there. See, that man, you get beside yourself. That's, that's not what it is. I, you, here's the problem. A lot of people that work for companies, they so involved in their company that they're not understanding what's going on around them. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so that's what he added. So you still need very gamer-focused values, but there's a lot of things you can do with our technology. We've really got a lot more going on than our competitors. We're doing things that can't be done on any other console. Can't be done. Now what he's referring to in terms of what can't be done is the idea of console gamers playing with PC gamers via crossplay. That's what he's talking about. But here's the problem. Walk with me now. He said, and quote, we really got a lot more going on than our competitors. We're doing things that can't be done on any other console. So why is it that Rocket League that just came out, it's a cross-play game with PS4 and PC players, Final Fantasy XIV, same thing, the upcoming Street Fighter V is going to have the PS4 PC cross-play, and Warframe, uh, uh, I, be I believe Warframe uh, does it as well. I know it didn't do it day one, but it was supposed to be a patch that came out that allowed you to do it. So, what I'm trying to say is, the comment that he just made, in quote, is a lie. Because it's already been done, there's games out that do it now, and there's more games that's coming, and in reality, Shadow Run, back on Xbox 360, was one of the first games, to my knowledge, to do that. So this is something that's not even fully new for this generation, but has been done in previous. You see what I'm saying? So when you say statements like we're doing things that can't be done on any other console, it sounds good to PR and to people that don't know or that won't question what you're saying, but kudo, I love you my dude, you my boy, but welcome to your first edition of We got more to go and talk about. Alright, now to continue part two. So Sonata went on to say that allowing people to play games wherever they want, on whatever device they choose, and making that easy, is Microsoft's long-term goal for the overall Xbox ecosystem. I completely agree. It, to add more to that, 
Microsoft dominates the PC world. So to me, it's like, why not take your console and your PC and just put it together as one big thing and truly dominate everything? Like, that's the way I'm looking at it. Like, you know what I'm saying? They have the ability to do so. So this is something I've been saying since the original Xbox came out when, where Bill, Bill Gates was at Times Square hanging out with the fellas. You know what I'm saying? That's how long ago I was envisioning that idea. Now, here's something I want to say, though. When you want to talk about playing games wherever they want and stuff like that, there's things that already exist. For instance, PlayStation Now already exists. Meaning, you don't even need a PlayStation system to play PlayStation games. That's crazy. So all those games on PS3, hundreds of them, thousands of them, whatever, hundreds of them, you can buy a Samsung TV and the PlayStation Now app will allow you to play PlayStation games, real games, with no system. That's crazy, right there. Then you got PlayStation Mobile that allows you to play PlayStation games on your mobile devices. You see what I'm saying? That's crazy. So you got your mobile devices, your TVs, all this other stuff, without the need for a console. Insane. Then you got PlayStation TV that exists. Meaning, your PlayStation 4 could be in another room, and as long as you got PlayStation TV in another room, another room, sorry, <laughs> in another room, you're not going to need two PlayStation 4s to have two PlayStation 4s technically in your house. Because you can stream whatever PlayStation 4 game is on that disc or, you know, in the, um, you know, digital download and play it through your PlayStation TV, along with playing your PlayStation Vita games on your PlayStation TV device. That's crazy sick. And you can stream that like that. That is crazy. You see what I'm saying? So, to me, a lot of things that they're doing as a long-term goal, Sony already has done and have in place, so to speak. You feel me? Shut fire! That's what it's all about right now, son. Another thing I want to talk about. With backwards compatibility, this is another thing that he said, with backwards compatibility, it isn't something that we just think gamers might want. Pseudo explain. We know we're looking for and soliciting that feedback. It was the number one most requested feature for Xbox One by far. Here is, here is the real right here, son. The fact that they said that this was the number one feature for Xbox One by far, here's, here's the pros and cons of that. The pros is, yes, we love the older Xbox games, and we love them so much that we never want to stop playing them. That's great. That's good energy. I feel the same way, because I got over 20,000 games myself. Let's get it popped. So, but here's another thing. If the number one feature on a new system is to play old games on it, that's more of a problem than progress. And to explain that more, when you look at PlayStation 4 and you want to talk about features that one system has that the other one don't got, share play. Share play is a feature that represents a progression. And what's so crazy about it, people never asked for share play because it was something so amazing that nobody thought it could even be done so it was never brought up in conversation like that but when Sony revealed how you could be sitting at home and your friends could have a whole bunch of games and you don't own them you can still play them you don't have to download them you don't have to stream them or nothing they turn on share play share with you you're playing drive club you're playing Infamous Second Son. You're playing games that you don't own, that you didn't have to download, and it's the first time it's ever been done in the history of console gaming. Period. Virtually handing your controller over like your homeboy is right next to you on the couch, or your homegirl. That's progression right there. You see what I'm saying? So, I said that to say this. Xbox One can't do that, at least not at the moment, but you notice that Kudo's comments in his interview didn't match up to the facts that I'm bringing to you 
and his claims actually support, support Sony's movements more as opposed to supporting his own in terms of what Microsoft is doing right now. You see what I'm saying? So, they're both great systems. They're both doing great things. But if there's nobody out there to challenge people's opinions, then their words is going to appear as truth and their words is going to appear as law. And you already know what I'm about, man. I'm hip hop game. I'm from Brooklyn, dog. Shut up, fire! We break the law. Let's go. Now for the last part. And I hope y'all can read this because this part is not as clear. So I'm sorry. I'm working on a lot of things. But listen, right? Check it out. For its part, Sony has said it has no plans to bring backwards compatibility to the PS4, right? Now, that's what PlayStation Now is. It's another way to do backwards compatibility in a streaming uh, fashion. So instead of doing it the old fashioned way like they did with PS2 to PS1 and PS3 to PS2 at that particular time, they did it a completely different way. But it still exists, wonder why? Because I could play Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, and God of War 1 and 2, and all this other stuff, and I could play Spec Ops The Line, like all these old games on my PlayStation 4 via PlayStation Now. So yeah, I can do that. That's one. The other thing is this. Not only does the Xbox One have features and functionality that can't be found or delivered on complete competing platforms, but the console has a bigger lineup of exclusives than anyone else, uh, uh, Sonata, Sonata said. We've got a lot more exclusive games than any other platform, he stated. Here is the problem. When you are a journalist, you have to read each word in a very crucial, detailed, specific manner. Because words, if some is missing or not put there, can make sentences mean something completely different. So, what he just said, we got a lot more exclusive games than any other platform. That's what he said. He didn't say we got a lot more exclusive games coming out this year on any other platform, or we have, but like, he didn't say anything like that. He just blatantly said we got a lot more exclusive games than any other platform. Quote, Sony has been building exclusive games, exclusive franchises since 1994. The original Xbox didn't come till 2001. Most of the exclusive games that Xbox was building wound up becoming multi-platform anyway because they was investing so much in third party instead of first party and that's why they invested in the first party now because they're doing what things now that they should have did back in 2001 when they first came out. You don't believe me? Think about Mass Effect. The first one, yeah, that was exclusive, but then what happened to the, to the, to the franchise? <coughs> I can play it on PlayStation, right? Titanfall, exclusive. Titanfall 2, not exclusive. You know what I'm saying? Rise of the Tomb Raider, exclusive right now, but time exclusive. You see what I'm saying? So that's the pattern that we've seen. Feel me? So, now, let's move on because there's things I'm gonna explain after my next paragraph. So that's not a true statement at all and it will be proven after my next paragraph like I put right there. So, some of Microsoft's biggest upcoming Xbox One exclusives for this year include Halo 5, Gears of War, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Fable, Forza Motorsport 6, Looking into Next Year and Beyond, Microsoft has Quantum Break, Sea of Thieves, Record, and Inside, among others. Amazing lineup. That looked crazy. I'm getting everything. I'm getting everything. That's it. Sony, on the other hand, has admitted that its first party games lineup for this year but this year's a little sparse. Okay, okay. Now, here's something that I really wanted to explain when I was telling you guys what I'm gonna explain after the first paragraph. The industry, all right, the industry has a way of making you think that if a game comes out this year, these are the only games that matter and games that came out before don't count. They have a way of keeping you so current that you forget about what's around you and what's available to you. 
You see what I'm saying? So, let me prove something to you, okay? Xbox One and PlayStation 4 got a ton of games for you to play with. A lot of games you didn't even experience yet. So to prove my point, this year, I hear a lot of people say, oh, Xbox One got all these games coming out this year, PlayStation 4 don't got that much. When in reality, day one, you had games like Knack. Day one, you had games like Killzone Shadowfall. If you didn't get those games in 2013, okay. They still there for you to get in 2015. They're still exclusive games. If you never played Rise or Dead Rising 3 on the Xbox One when those first came out in 2013, does it mean you still can't buy them in 2015? And that can't be a part of the collection that you get for this year? That can't be a reason why you buy a system this year for a game that came out in 2013? Really? If you say I'm lying, you're lying. You wonder why? Why do you think GameStop made a deal so they can start selling retro games again? You wanna know why? Why do you think video games New York and a lot of places you go to still sell retro games? You wanna know why? Because there's people like me that when we was younger, there's a lot of games we wanted to play but couldn't play because we had no money, we had no jobs, we couldn't get nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then you get older, you think about all the games you've missed out on, you want to play, and you'll buy a Dreamcast to play Power Stone right now, as if it was new. You'll buy Sega Genesis to play that Streets of Rage game that you probably didn't get a chance to play. Golden Axe, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm trying, the, the, what I'm trying to instill in y'all is that if you're a real gamer, play the games and the games that's available. You see what I'm saying? If you look at Sony's roster, you got Infamous Second Son, Net, Drive Club, Ratchet and Clank, The Reimagining that's coming, The Last of Us, Uncharted 1, 2, 3, God of War 3, Killzone Shadow 4, Horizon, Until Dawn, Street Fighter 5, The Order, MLB The Show, Injustice, Guilty Gear, Little Big Planet 3, Last Guardian, and more. That's out now, can't been out, and coming in the future. You know, on Xbox One, you got Rise. Dead Rising 3, 4s and 5, 6, Horizon, Ori and the Blind Forest, Cuphead, Fable Legends, Gears 4, Gears Ultimate Edition, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, Halo 5, Quantum Break, Recore, Scalebound, all these games. But the industry will make you feel like the only games that matter are the ones that are coming out this year and make a big thing about that. No, if a game comes out and it's hot, it matters. If a game come out and you don't like it, somebody else may like it. It don't matter. If a game comes out, it matters. It matters. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, I proved my point. Yeah, I'm nice. This is how we do. If you don't believe me, see me, challenge me, do whatever you want. But yo, Kudo, I love you. You my dude. I'll see you at E3 again this year. Hope maybe I'll see you in Seattle. I don't know. But look, I had to do this because just as well as it's your job to sell a product, and let people know what's going on, it's my job to make sure the truth is out there as a journalist and as a gamer first. Alright? One love, God bless your boy, hip-hop gamer. Shut up, you bad star game! Yeah! What?